Good morning. Uh, today we are going to talk to Dr. Martha Kosa, a researcher and an academic head in the Department of Languages in Education. Welcome, Doctor. Thank you very much. Uh, doctor, can you share with us how did you become a researcher? Well, once again, thank you for having me. Um, soon after completing my PhD in languages, linguistics and literature, I grabbed every opportunity presented through applying and conducting externally funded research projects. My experience of publishing started through collaboration with experienced researchers. We published three papers within a year. So another thing is that I used this experience to publish papers, chapters and conference proceedings alone and with others. <clears throat> My passion for research attracts people who end up wanting to work with me with research. And this is also exacerbated by the fact that I am committed in whatever I do. So far, in all the research projects that I have conducted, I have been leading as a principal investigator. And I made sure that all those research projects were done to completion. Thank you very much. Thank you, Doctor. And then, Doctor, what are you currently working on? Currently, um, I am publishing papers, conference proceedings, and chapters alone, and I'm also co-publishing with other people. I supervise honors, masters, and PhD students, and I review conference abstracts, articles, and research proposals. I externally examine master's dissertations and doctoral thesis. I am currently engaging in collaboration with the University of Campinas in, in Brazil for the NRF research project and I'm also um, in the process of concluding a research report from a research project that I conducted last year with the Department of Basic Education in terms of benchmarking um, African languages in reading performance. And I'm also involved in mentoring aspiring researchers in the Languages in Education Department. Whenever I feel a need to recharge, I attend workshops and this helps me um, to sort of improve my performance in uh, managing the languages in the education department and my research activities. Thank you. Thank you so much, Doctor. Mm -hmm. And then, Doctor, looking at African languages, how can we promote them as languages of scholarship 
research and teaching and learning? Um, currently, African languages are only used as languages of learning and teaching here in South Africa only for three years in the foundation phase. So this is not enough. And when we visit the higher institution, we found that there is still a gap. African languages are not yet developed to a point where they are supposed to be. There is still <coughs> a need for a research to explore strategies we should focus on promoting languages curriculum across disciplines. So if research could focus on that, though it might not be an easy task, we might end up arriving to a point where we are able to align our African languages together with the most dominant languages that we think are powerful than the indigenous languages. Thank you. Thank you so much, Doctor. And then coming to the colonization of the curriculum, what is your take on that? Um, I think with regard to decolonization, we are only at a point where we, we are preaching the gospel of decolonization, but we are not actually implementing what decolonization is actually uh, defining. So we are not yet there. Um, we speak of decolonization, but when we visit um, our higher education institutions, you will find that um, most of the curriculum, most of the, 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 the junk of the curriculum is still influenced by the, the, the Western style. Our indigenous knowledge, it's not yet penetrating to a point where we are able to say we own what we are developing. Thank you. Thank you so much, Doctor. And then, Doctor, are there any exciting gaps within your field? Yeah, there are exciting gaps in my field. The fact that I am able to apply uh, for external ref uh, funded research projects and end up um, conducting those projects by going to the field and collect data. I have the opportunity to sit down and say now I have written the report from the research project. I can be able to share knowledge through publication. So that is what actually uh, uh, excites me because I do not have time to just sit and wonder where do I get data to be able to publish papers. Because I work too much on research, I just sit down and open my, my file and just choose what is it that now I want to publish, what is it that I want uh, to share knowledge from the work that I have done. So this is what actually excites me. Thank you so much, Doctor. And then, from your opinion, what role can technology play in the field of education, especially in languages? Thank you also for that question. Technology is very important. We have witnessed that in the past two years during COVID, and that's where it was confirmed or demonstrated that we cannot do without technology. We ignored it, but COVID-19 was uh, a, 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 in a, a, a way of alerting and caution, cautioning us that we need to familiarize ourselves with, with uh, development. 
So technology is so very significant because today we are able to conduct online classes. Today we are able to assess students online and that is convenient because students who are registered and you find that they are unable to attend classes face to face, they have the opportunity of obtaining information through accessing online classes. We, 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 our timetable in the department is so congested to a point where you find that we are unable to cater for the teaching and learning of all the students during the day. So we are able to accommodate some students at night around 7 o'clock and we can be able to conduct those classes online without the students coming physically to classes. So I think it is significant in terms of using it in that way. Thank you. Thank you so much, Doctor. And then, from your opinion, what do you think uh, open education resources can play in supplementing traditional ones? Open education Asian resources, mm. yes. Can supplement? Yes, the traditional resources. Okay. Open education resources, are you referring to the online resources? Yes. Those ones can be able to supplement the traditional traditional resources in the sense that, as I indicated, we, we are sometimes unable to cater for all the students because some are attending classes face-to-face, -face, but you find that Others are unable to do that because they are maybe working part-time in order to supplement uh, their, 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 their financial burdens. So if they can't be able to attend a traditional face-to-face -face classroom, they still have the opportunity to be able to access teaching and learning materials online. And why? Because the teacher should be able to accommodate what we call hybrid mode of teaching. And through this hybrid mode of teaching, that's where we are able to accommodate both face-to-face -face and online teaching. So even those face-to-face -face students who are attending classes, they can still be able to access online material and enhance the knowledge that they experienced in the classroom or maybe supplement if maybe they did not get the opportunity to understand clearly what the lecturer was teaching. So I think that is how the two modes can be able to, 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 to complement each other, the traditional as well as the online. Thank you so much, Doctor. And then, Doctor, what message can you give to aspiring researchers? Um, when I, whenever I think of research, two words are playing in my mind, curiosity and interest. Curious, one needs to be curious in order to select a relevant research topic and formulate research questions and persevere throughout their research project or their writing and publishing of their papers. And when it comes to interest, one also needs to develop interest in order to remain focused and committed to their research topic. Therefore, my advice to aspiring researchers is to develop and possess these two significant skills. Thank you. Thank you so much, Doctor. And then, 
Earlier you speak about uh, collaborating with uh, a university in Brazil. Are there any uh, things that we can learn from Brazil that we can implement here at our local uh, universities? Yes, that is why um, when I came across the, 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 the call from the NRF for developing a proposal, and this came directly in terms of requesting an effective collaboration between Brazil and South Africa. And given that I once attended a conference in Brazil, I was able to network them, so I felt like, no, this collaboration is going to, 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 to sort of increase the level of knowledge between the, between the two universities because we are going to share what we have here at home and they will bring theirs when combined we are going to, 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 to contribute knowledge, uh, not locally, but internationally. So, in this case, I am still in the process of recruiting researchers here at home and also in Brazil so that we can develop a proposal which we can submit for acceptance for NRF funding. So it is still in progress. Okay. Yes. Thank you so much, Doctor. Mm -hmm. And then coming back to your work, your writing, is there any specific school of thought or perspective that influence your writing? My writing is influenced by my passion to acquire new knowledge. And this also comes with the fact that I enjoy and feel better when I share knowledge with other people. So by so doing, I am able to have um, a space where I can be able to develop um, modules that I teach in the Languages in Education develop, uh, Department as well as encouraging the staff members to be able to join me on board so that when we do these things we are able to work collaboratively whatever knowledge I have acquired, I am able to share with them and whatever they know, they can share with me so that we can be able to work collaboratively in publishing papers and also getting involved in conducting research project together as a department. Thank you so much, Doctor. And then apart from research, what are your other interests? Um, I am particularly intrigued by the fact that I, I enjoy learning new things. Uh, 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 I can't say I have arrived. And we all know that for us to be able to grow, learning is continuum. Hence, I find myself attending workshops, and this helps me a lot to become effective in my managing of the department and also in my research activities. So hence, I enjoy learning new things. I don't want to say I, I have arrived, or as I know, I still need to learn. And when we look at uh, technology, we are now no longer talking of 
uh, the third industrial revolution. We are approaching the fourth industrial revolution. So if you get stuck and you stop and say, I am no longer learning, I have reached the cul-de-sac, you will not be able to cope with the new things that are still coming. So I believe in preparing myself for the new things that are coming so that I can be able to adapt accordingly and still be effective. Thank you. Thank you, Doctor. And then, going back again, Doctor, looking at the family engagement, how can they assist in reading for meaning for young kids? Um, we all know that um, with regard to teaching reading, it's not only the responsibility of teachers and a learner himself or herself. Parents are also involved. Actually, parents are primary teachers. So what we need to do in order to bring parents on board to help all get involved in the teaching of reading for their children is to teach them how they should do these things. Because a teacher is the only person who has received uh, education and training in terms of how to teach reading, but parents are not. So in order to bring them on board, because they play a very important role, they need to be workshopped, they need to be trained, they need to be updated of the progress of their children, at school. If the teacher is able to communicate with a parent of a particular learner, update them of their progress or of where they are struggling, and they work together collaboratively in order to assist the reading of that particular child, then parents will be able to take their own responsibility. But if we do not engage them and we, 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 we develop the culture of parents thinking that it is the responsibilities of teachers alone, then our children will not be able to learn how to read. Thank you so much, Doctor. We really appreciate your time. Mm. Thank you. Okay. okay, thank you very much for having me. Thank you.